what's up guys and welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking i'm truly truly grateful to all those who have been watching my videos and if you're new here guys please do me a favor by clicking the subscribe button so we can go on this motorcycle vlogging journey together so guys today i'm back again with another video and in this video i'm going to talk about seven things that i wish the new honda cb500x had come with from the factory stay tuned So guys, as you may already know from my previous videos, my version of the CB500X is the 2019 version. It was a model year where Honda decided to completely upgrade from the older version to the new model. Now as part of this model upgrade, Honda made a lot of changes to the previous model that makes it a much better mini sort of adventure bike better than the previous one. So guys, let me start off by saying that I absolutely love this motorcycle. However, I am human and just like Oliver Twist, I always ask for more. So guys, I've had this bike for a little over a year now and I think I've had enough experience with it to be able to talk about some things that I'm missing and that I wish had come with the bike from the factory. I mainly use it as a commuter bike, usually to go to and from work and also to ride for fun when I go out riding with friends. And these are the things that I've noticed. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is a windscreen or as some people may call it, a windshield. Now, it's not just me, but a number of people have also complained about how short the windscreen is and the taller riders would wish for something taller. Now, the windshield that has been provided as stock is not too bad for many people, especially if you're about 170, 175 centimeters tall. But if you're above that, especially for people who are about 180 and above, it is a really short screen. And when you do ride, there's a lot of wind buffeting hitting your helmet and very loud wind noise, and you can't really enjoy the ride. So most people, including myself, have had to go for an aftermarket screen just to get it a little bit higher. And I will put a link up there. You can take a look at it and see my installation video of my new windshield that solved the problem. Now it could be argued that maybe they didn't install a taller windscreen because we have the people of different heights and they would have to strike an average but an adjustable windscreen would have done the trick. It's not as if the original screen is not adjustable, it is, but even in the highest setting, it is still too short for some riders. And I know some people have argued that if the screen is too tall, then you have to look through, and a lot of people don't like that. Well, the one I got um, is adjustable as well, but even in the, in the highest setting, I still am a bit able to look over uh, the screen. I don't look th through the screen. I only look through the screen if something is really close to me, but at average speeds, I look over the screen, so it doesn't bother me in any way. The second wish for this bike is switchable ABS. So it comes with ABS as standard, and I think in some other markets, there is a non-ABS version, but I have the ABS version. Now the ABS is not switch switchable, so once you turn on your bike, you start riding off, ABS is engaged. Now this is very helpful for safety, especially on road, but for people who are riding off road or are riding in situations where they need the brakes to lock in order to stop or to do other maneuvers, this is very important. Now I already said that I usually use my bike as a commuter bike, which means I'm riding more on road than off road, but it will be a beautiful and nice feature to have so that I know that when I hit some terrain or if I want to have fun with the bike, I can switch off the ABS. I mean, cheaper competitors such as the Benelli 500X Adventure has switchable ABS and many other bikes out there. So I think this is something Honda could have included if they were thinking of this bike as a mini adventure bike. Now, the third thing that I wish this bike came with is a USB socket or a 12 volt socket. Now, if you look at the dash area of the Honda CB500X, there is an opening that has been made and has been covered by some sort of a rubber cover. And that hole is meant for installing a USB socket or a 12 volt socket. Now, I don't know for sure, but I don't think this would have cost them so much money to install a 12 volt socket. And I think I've seen in other videos where you can buy it aftermarket and there's already the connector, so you don't have to do too much alteration. 
a Honda could have easily installed the 12 volt socket or a USB socket and charge a little bit more on the price of the bike. I don't think this would have been difficult for them to do. It's not a deal breaker, you can get aftermarket, but it's just nice to have everything installed from factory. Now the fourth thing that I find really annoying on the Honda CB500X, well, my model is a Chinese market model and the bike came without a pass light button. So in certain riding conditions, you wanna flash someone ahead of you to let them know what you're thinking, what you wanna do and all that. But on China model, you don't have the flasher button so you need to have your headlights on and switch between high and low beam to indicate to oncoming vehicles and i find this really annoying it is something that should be standard on bikes and it's on even cheaper bikes so i do not understand why honda will omit that on the models that come to the chinese market it's probably due to local regulations i don't know but i think that this is a big omission and it shouldn't be on such a big bike and directly related to this point is the hazard switch. So on other models in other regions, the hazard light function is available, but on the Chinese market model, there is no hazard light function. So on my bike, the hazard button on other markets models is the headlights switch. So if you're parked on the roadside, you have an emergency and you want to alert oncoming and drivers from behind or in front of you, that you are stopped and it's an emergency situation, you can only turn on one side of the turn signal, left or right. You can't, you don't have the hazard. And this together with a pass light switch is a very annoying omission that I think shouldn't have happened. These two are very important for safety. So they should be on every bike. Now the fifth thing I would like to talk about is the foot pegs. So the rider's foot pegs are rubberized. If you look at them, they have a thick rubber on the on the top of the, the the alloy metal and i'm guessing it's to cushion vibrations but if one of the selling points of this bike is some on road and off road then i would think that they should have installed non rubber foot pegs so that on road it's safe and off road is safe as well because even on road when you're riding sometimes it rains and it depends on the kind of boots you're wearing the pairs could be slippery so I think that they could have used off-road type of foot pegs to keep the rider safe, especially when you stand on the bike. So if it's rubber and it's slippery, your legs might slip and this is very dangerous. But if it's metal and it has those teeth that are sticking out, then it's gonna dig into your shoes and that's gonna keep you on the bike. So this is something that I think they should consider. Now, the sixth thing I would like to talk about is the front forks, the front suspension. So it has three settings from soft, medium, and hard. Now I've put it on the softer setting because I like I like it soft, but even with soft, the rebound from potholes and uneven road surfaces is too strong. And sometimes you feel the bike jolting when it's rebounding. So you feel the front end of the bike jolting up and pushing your hands backwards and i feel like it could have been a little bit softer if people are going to take this bike off road it's going to be safer because then you have better control of the front part of the bike the rear part is not a big problem the major problem is the front forks so if this bike is being touted as a as a mini adventure bike i think the front suspension could be a little bit softer and there are people who have gone for aftermarket suspensions from companies such as Rally Raid and others just to get it to be off-road worthy. So this is something for Honda to consider. Such a suspension on the F or the R is fine, but on the X, I think it's too hard. Now the seventh and the last on my wish list is the vibrations that you feel above 4,000 RPM several people have complained about this as well so when you're riding below 4000 rpm which is usually about 70 or 80 kilometers per hour it's absolutely fine but once the rpm goes beyond just after 4000 rpm you start to feel the vibrations in the handlebars and in your feet it almost makes you want to reduce your speed because you don't want to be comfortable between 80 and 70 and 80 kilometers per hour so this is something that I think should be looked at as well. 
Now I can understand that it wasn't built for high speed highway cruising, but if the bike can go up to about 140 plus kilometers per hour, you don't want riders to be stuck with 70 and 80 kilometers per hour all the time. There are times when people want to ride fast and slow down. Now, when you're crossing that threshold and you feel the vibrations, it's a little bit annoying. And so this is something that I wish they take a look at in future models. It doesn't matter if I don't have it, but for subsequent buyers, this will be a very good change. So there you have it guys. These are the seven things that I wish the Honda CB500X had. Like I said in the beginning, it's an amazing bike. It's fun to ride. It's easy to take care of. It's cheap to manage and it's problem free. So if you're thinking of getting a commuter bike uh, that can also do a little bit of adventure, don't hesitate if you can afford it. You might agree or disagree with me on some of these points that I've mentioned, but please leave it in the comments below so we can discuss about it. Share your opinion. Let's know what you think about these seven points that I've mentioned. All right, guys, so we've come to the end of this video. So those were the seven things that I wish the Honda CB500 had come with from the factory. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I have other videos on the channel, so make some time to check them out and subscribe. Click on the bell icon. So when I upload new videos, you'll be one of the first to see it. And like I said, don't forget to leave a comment. So thank you once again till I see you in the next video. Riley Girl, ride safe. Peace.